Uh, so once again, my name is Philip Goodrich. I run Partners and Alliances for Hypori. Uh, we offer a virtual mobility solution, and I'll get in a little bit to, to what that is here in just a second. Um, so I wanted to start by showing you basically what the three keys are to our solution. You know, being able to uh, use a virtual device basically means any user, any device from any location. And then having zero data at rest uh, means no data ever actually touches the, the user's device. So there's no leakages and, and there's, since there's uh, no data ever going out, you don't have to worry about trying to protect data that's actually out on an endpoint. And then of course, you know, guaranteeing 100% separation, uh, that means minimized risk, which ends up giving you peace of mind. So, you know, as, as it, you know, what does it mean for you? Of course, you guys can read less risk, you know, reduced cost equals more security. So let's start with looking at a few different uh, uh, surveys and facts that we brought in. So um, it's, it's interesting that mobility has been gaining momentum um, with over half of the people now using mobile devices. Um, and, and it's even looking to grow even more in the next two years. Uh, we actually saw a huge rise once COVID started, um, you know, accelerating this trend and especially within our, our customers in the defense community. You know, here you have people that are used to working from inside a secure location on a secure network. Now they're out working from home. And so they came to us to help, uh, you know, look at and examine and solve the problem of how do I get to my data securely and not worry about data leakage. So here's some of the challenges that we saw from a BYOD perspective. Um, the first and the biggest one, of course, being cost. I mean, when you look at what, it, what you have to do in order to put out mobile devices, you have to go out and buy the device, you have to insure the device, you have to process claims if there's problems with the device. You know, you have to buy a carrier plan, you have to pay all the services fees that go with that. And then of course you have the internal cost of, of you know, implementation and managing that. And I've even had some customers tell us it essentially works out to one full-time employee, um, depending on the number of devices you're managing. And then of course you have breach costs. I mean, the, the, the average cost of breaches, uh, we'll get into, I have a slide on that later from the healthcare community, um, but that is just, it's, it's not cheap anymore. Um, from a security perspective, um, if you look at, uh, even if you have MDM on a, on a phone, um, you're still open to man in the middle attacks, or what if someone steals the device and puts it in a Faraday bag, a bag that basically hides a device um, until they get it to a secure location where they can um, you know, break into it and, and download any data that's on there. Um, so this is always an issue. Um, from a privacy perspective, um, you know, you basically want me to give up access to all my personal information on my device so that you can load something to, to manage and monitor while I'm using it at work. Um, no thanks. A lot, of, a lot of customers, I even talked with one this morning that said, I don't want to have to, you know, have my finger on that button to, to wipe somebody's device and get rid of not only all their photos and everything, even if they're backed up, it's just something you don't want to deal with. Um, continuity of operations. So this is an interesting one. I mean, how long does it take now when you, if someone loses a phone or let's say they do what my neighbor did a few weeks ago, put his phone on top of the roof of his car, started backing up and ended up backing over his phone. Um, usually it takes what, days or weeks to get a new phone out to the person, get a provision, get it set up. With us, you can essentially go to Walmart and buy a burner phone and within 30 minutes, I can get you back up and running. Um, and what, what that means is the less downtime your employees have with an endpoint device, the more productive they can be. Um, and then of course, compatibility and interoperability. We can work with just you know, any Android, iOS, tablet or phones, as well as Chromebooks and Windows 10 devices. Now let's start looking at some more facts. So I just talked about this one a little bit ago. Seven million dollars the cost of a cyber attack in, in, in the healthcare business, um, the, uh, or actually a breach, I, my mistake there. Um, this, this is not cheap. Um, even, even if it was down to $5 million, um, you know, mitigating that and, and trying to 
absorb that cost, even with risk management insurance, is, is just not an easy thing to do. Um, let's look at in Q1, uh, mobile phishing attacks increased by just an amazing rate. Um, this is something that we saw from uh, with work from home, attackers basically went out to where the mobile workers were, which was pretty much on their devices. And we kind of think that that kind of coincided the whole work from home in Q1 of 21 um, kind of coincided with this increase. So, and here, I, I love this one. So, you know, how do you, how do you, you know, uh, defend and, and manage a mobile device? Um, you know, why, why defend it at all? You know, our point of view is take a zero trust approach. If they're using a device, don't trust it. And, and how do you do that? Just don't ever let the data go out and touch the device. So cost comparison. So this is what I, I call the show me the money slide. So if you take a thousand user cost comparison is what we did here. And if you look at the cost of, you know, buying a device and then the enterprise annual cost, which includes software and time to manage and everything versus using 100%, you know, uh, BYOD and using Hypori, you know, you're saving in excess of $300,000 a year on a thousand users. Now we did make this uh, case study available that you can download. Um, Jason's going to have that out in the assets once we finish up. Um, so feel free to download that and, and take a look at it. Um, I wanted to show you a slide um, that kind of shows how we're set up and it shows the seven different layers of security that we have in place. Essentially, all we're doing is we're sending encrypted pixels to the device and then we're sending touch input information back to the data center. So by, by doing that, it basically eliminates the ability to do a man in the middle attack. And using that TLS 1.2 um, inner tunnel inside of a VPN tunnel uh, kind of doubles up the encryption. Um, it is interesting to point out all we, we do have, and I can get into uh, on a one-on-one -on -one conversation, some of the security certifications we have from um, NIST and CF, CSFC. Um, but when you get put to use by the Department of Defense and um, by some of the military groups that we have as customers, um, being able to prove that you have the, the best security in the world uh, is, is, is what you need to be able to just sit at the table. Uh, now we also are available on Azure. So if you, if you would like to do this where uh, you have all of your Hypori instances um, on Azure, we have that capability as well. And we actually have it set up where we can include the cost of the Azure platform with your Hypori subscription license. Um, it is interesting to note that um, uh, Microsoft uh, worked with us exclusively on uh, some uh, on a use case that we're going to hopefully have an announcement about in a couple of weeks. If you want to talk one on one, I can give you a little bit more inside track on that. Um, AWS is going to be coming up in the near future. Uh, I'm personally working with them to get those things set up. Um, so now it, you can either have Hypori either in Azure, on premise, or in our private cloud. All right, let's go back to some, some, uh, some, some more facts. So with Hypori, you, you don't have to worry about um, monitoring software on the device. Um, and I'm trying to look for my little cheat, cheat seat. Um, it, it is interesting to note that we were basically have been told by our customers, as well as by some of the people we're working at, with at Gartner, that we have, we're kind of like the next evolution of MDM. Um, we actually have created, you know, the guys at Gartner tell us we essentially created our own category that, um, you know, MDN, it's funny, one, the one guy would say, yeah, MDM, that's so 2010, um, you know, it's 2021. We need, we need something that's, that, you know, kind of is the next evolution. And that's what Hypori has brought to the table. Um, and the whole idea of building for, for one type of device and deploying on, on any type of endpoint um, makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about, am I, am I you know, trying to craft for iOS? Am I crafting for Android? What about Windows 10? How does that work? Hey, what if I got a bunch of people on Chromebooks? Um, we can handle all of those use cases because we're just 
trying to, uh, we only have one build and makes and make it available for any device. And did you know there's 24 different versions of Android? Until, until I was getting ready to do this presentation, I knew there were several out there, but I didn't, I didn't realize there were actually 24. That's, that's kind of an interesting fact. Um, so when you, when you talk about addressing the different challenges, we, we've talked about all of them. And I'm sorry, I kind of raced through this uh, uh, really fast, uh, was trying to get to the Q&A. Um, you know, we look at, you know, reducing the cost, making sure you, you're secure and compliant. Like I said before, um, I can, uh, in one-on-one -on -one conversations, get into a little bit more of the details around some of the security certifications we have. Um, and the other thing that uh, we welcome the opportunity for anybody to attend SYNC is to set up a time for us to do a one-on-one -on -one demo with you to actually show you how the device works and more importantly, to show you what capabilities and controls you have in the administrative panel that, um, that comes as part of the Hyporia subscription. Um, if you're on the uh, federal side, my boss, Brian Kowalski, is the best person to get a hold of. His contact points are there, and the, these will be available after the meeting, as well as my information right here. And at that point, I'll stop. I'll be quiet for now and ask for questions. Jason? No worries. Thank you very much. I'm just going to leave these contact details up here for a little bit, folks, just in case you want to um uh take note of, of phil's details here so yeah let's jump into some questions there's some stuff coming in in the chat and some q a uh, and q a box as well um folks please do try and utilize the q a box as best as possible otherwise i might miss some of your questions in the chat but one came in in the chat does this work in countries where towers are government owned um so if that's a great question um and, and this has come up with some people we're working with at, at Azure. Um, right now, I'd say uh, if I had to be pinned down, um, the official answer is only in the US, continental US, Alaska, and Hawaii. Um, we, we do have um, some pretty remarkable statistics regarding latency, including latency from the US to um, Europe. Um, where we've been in shows over uh, in Spain and in uh, Italy, and we're using um, the Hypori instance that was housed in Austin, Texas, and saw really great response time. Um, as far as particular countries and how the data, you know, how the Hypori signals traversing across the cell towers, um, I'd have to get into a little bit more. Uh, I'd have to bring in one of my technical guys to kind of talk about how that works. If, if you want, if you want to send that question in separate to Jason, um, I'd be glad to address it offline. Yeah, no worries. And we will tackle that at the end, guys, as well, just in case everyone's interested in having that conversation. Um, question here, what tactics have you successfully used to convince users that the MDM will not monitor their private activities and will not delete their private slash personal data if and when they are terminated via the MDM? Yeah, so we actually have a, a few different ways where we can show them um, the, the easy one that um, once you explain it to them and show them how it works is we open up the Hypori, um, the Hypori device and we take a picture of something and then we tell them to close out the Hypori device and go find the picture on their phone. The, the, the trick is the, the picture will never reside on their phone. What happened was we accessed the camera's phone just to take that photo but then the, the photo itself and all the data with it goes back into the data center. So when they look in their own personal gallery or photo, photo box, um, there's nothing on there. But when they log back into Hypori and go into the gallery on their, on their Hypori instance, they can see the photos there. So that's one way that we, we prove to them that there is no data ever on their device and that we're not, we're not trying to grab any data. Got you, great. How would Hypori work with Intune? Is there a cost benefit? Um, so there, there is some cost benefit. We actually are working with Intune right now. Um, uh, and Jenny's helping out with some of the Q&A there. Thank you, Jenny, for that. Um, we do work with Intune as well as with other MDM providers. We've had some customers that have asked us to be able to uh, work with existing MDM for a variety of reasons. Um, and even though 
for the most part, we say it's not required. We do have the ability to work with it. Intune in particular, we're working with uh, for a Azure implementation right now. So we do have that ability. Fantastic. Um, does Hypori support company managed devices? Yes, we do. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter whose device it is, whether if it's company owned or if it's personal. Um, one of the one of the nice things about um, Hypori is we do make you know BYOD um, a lot easier to become a reality because you don't have to buy the company owned device. But if you already have company owned devices and you're still in the point of realizing cost um, cost back on those, um, if they're not going to be you know off the capital sheets for a few more years. You can um, uh, basically deploy Hypori on those. Okay, great. Um, another question around Intune as well. Obviously, you work with, about working in tandem. But how is Hypori different that, than an MDM solution or Microsoft Intune? Yeah, that's and that's perfect. So what what you're doing with with most MDM, well, actually with all MDM solutions, is you're asking the the end user to give up control of their phone in case the need arises for them to be able to wipe the data off of the phone. Um, you have to remember, we're taking a zero trust approach. We never let any data ever touch the device, period, full stop. If there's no data on the device, there's no need to manage the device. Now we can, with, with basically one or two clicks in our admin panel, either pause, stop, or delete accounts. So if we think someone's phone has been, has been stolen or compromised with one click in the admin panel, I can, I can stop services. Um, we do work with um, several defense customers right now that have um, two-factor authentication put in place where they have to use both their Hypora username and password as well as say, for example, um, a YubiKey uh, in order to uh, be able to access their phone. Um, and that's kind of the ways that, you know, that we, we prevent um, having to use, you know, anything that actually sits on the phone. But we think MDM is, is kind of, you know, it, it was great when it first came out. We think it's run its lifespan and that this is the next generation of, of what uh, needs to, you know, needs to be embraced um, from a mobile device management perspective. Got you, fantastic. Um, user experience seems like the biggest issue here. Mm -hmm. What should users expect compared to on-device apps? So, and that's a great question. Um, a lot of it comes down to latency. So if we can keep the latency um, down um, very low, below 225 milliseconds, they get an app-like experience, just like it's a native app on their phone. Um, typically in the US, we've seen anywhere from 15 to 50 milliseconds is a typical um, response time. Uh, we actually were doing some benchmark testing for um, a customer a few weeks ago, and they were they were impressed that people in California that were hitting um, our data center in Austin, uh, what the response time looked like. Um, I can tell you when you get on um, Azure or AWS, the response time is incredible because you have to remember um, we're working at data center speed, so the applications are launching and running at the speed of the network inside the data center. Um, as long as you have um, a couple of bars, for example, of connectivity, or if you're connected to Wi-Fi, even better, um, the, the speed and the, and the response time is just like you're in a native app. Got you. Phil, obviously, um, you know, a lot of comments coming in in the chat here around, you know, a lot of these folks, especially security executives, whether they have it in the organization as a mandate or not, they have a personal device, they have their work device, right? Mm -hmm. um, BYID, as we know, is second nature to, to a lot of folks these days. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, um, what, do you, what are the common pitfalls people or organizations make when trying to implement a solid, secure BYID strategy? Well, a lot of it is, and, and it's funny because, and I think there's someone on from uh, a company who I won't mention, I was talking with them this morning, and he said, you know, it's, it, you know, deploying MDM, he said, not only is it cumbersome, but I don't want to be the guy with my finger on the button that I have to erase somebody's phone. He goes, that, he goes, that is just, you know, and, and we've seen, we've got documented cases of where we've seen people actually um, have lawsuits where someone had a phone wiped by mistake. And next thing you know, you're out three or $4 million because of a lawsuit. 
Um, uh, and, and it's just, um, it, I, I don't know a lot of the details around what MDM takes to run on a device, um, but the fact that we're, we're, we're very lightweight, we take very little resources, um, you see almost like zero uh, battery usage from us or even uh, the bandwidth usage. And we even have a way that we can show you um, on a cycle period, like over a month's time, you know, how much time the user spent either on their data plan or on Wi-Fi if you have to do billback. So billback is, is, is very easy. Um, but, I, but I think from a simplicity perspective, um, being able to, to deploy um, Hypori by sending um, end users an email with the QR code that's unique to them and that they just take a picture of the QR code and that launches the, the app and their instance on their device is critical. Um, just the, and, and the fact that the users, you know, a lot of it is user adoption. That's the big thing nowadays. And if users aren't impressed and happy with the performance they get, they're, you're going to hear about it. Um, and that's, that's kind of why we've been so sensitive to the response time issue. Thank you very much. Um, is the user in the same virtual environment, e.g. a Windows environment everywhere, um, regardless of the platform, or do they get an iOS experience on iOS, Android experience on Android, Windows, on Windows? Yeah, and, that, and, that's, and that's a great question too. So, um, we, so we are a, a virtual Android phone. Now we do have the ability to do a, um, what, what's called a, uh, it's, I call it a skin. We can, we can change the, 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 the skin of the device to look like it's an iPhone type of experience. So you can either go native Android, which a lot of Android users are very familiar with, or you can go out and change the settings so that it looks more like an iPhone type of um, setup. And that's, kind of, that's what I use with my phone. Uh, I, I've been an iPhone user for, for years. I love it. When I first came on, they gave me my Hypori. I looked at the Android skin and said, ah, you know, not my favorite, you know? Um, and they said, oh, well here, just switch the skins and you're now, I was like, oh, okay, now it looks like I'm on an iPhone. Um, so you get that, that same kind of, it's not, it's not identical. Of course, you can understand why um, Apple won't let us do that, but a very similar look and feel and the way it reacts and swipes and everything is very similar to iPhone. Good stuff. Uh, okay, fantastic. Uh, you mentioned DOD. Do you meet FedRAM and CMMC certification standards? So CMMC, I believe the answer is yes. FedRAMP we're working on. Um, I also understand that like if you're in, uh, I'll, let's just leave it at, I'm going to say we're working on FedRAMP right now. You. No worries. Um, obviously, you've spoken a bit about the support with Microsoft and stuff. Uh, does the solution fully support Teams audio slash conferencing? Yes, it does. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, what does the high level architecture deployment look like? Do you need an on premise MDM solution? Uh, no. So, um, as we talked about earlier, so you can now um, buy Hypori and have it 100% on Azure platform or in our, um, in our data center, in our cloud. Um, or you can even, if you want to, it's a little bit more expensive, but if you want to have an on-premise solution, you can go that route as well. It's basically a subscription to an appliance. Um, we see cloud growing in, uh, cloud use growing by leaps and bounds within our user community. And uh, that, that kind of takes away a lot of the headaches. And that's every, everybody that we've presented cloud to as, a, as an option has taken us up on it even existing customers. We actually had a, a very large uh, defense um, agency that, that bought 10,000 licenses from us. After they got deployed on premise, uh, they found out we were, we were looking at Azure and they said, can we move to Azure next year? And we said, absolutely you can. Nice. Um, another question here about battery life and what that looks like. Do you have specs on that? Um, I do have specs on it. I can send you if you can uh, give me contact information. Um, I, it's very, very minimal. And that's if you, and, and I think, I'd, I'd have to go back and look, but I think the testing we did was over the course of like several hours using Hypori exclusively. Um, and uh, you can, uh, Jenny's putting on there, if you go to hypori.com MDM comparison white paper, there's some specs out there. Um, 
but I can actually uh, find a little bit more of a detailed answer from the uh, battery use perspective. Good stuff, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, user experience seems like the biggest issue here. We've had that, sorry. Um, how would you address the high latency challenge of VMI over MDM? So the, 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 the best way to do it, and this is kind of why we like cloud so much, is that um, when you're on Azure, for example, we know, and, and it does know where your users are. So it's, it, it, and I'm not gonna, I hate to say it this way, but it kind of automatically adjusts to where the users are and makes the data close to them. Um, and, and I guess the, the best way, and, and Brian, who was gonna present today is much more technical than me, so, but he got called in by the NSA. So my apologies in, in advance for uh, Brian, Brian not being here, but when the NSA calls, you have to answer. Um, uh, the, the, the latency thing is, is interesting. And what we usually like to do is uh, actually have you try it where we can give you a demo account and let you actually try it out on your own and kind of see how that works. And we can do demo accounts either on our instance of Hypori or on an Azure instance of Hypori or even an AWS. Um, uh, so if you want to uh, reach out to us separately afterwards, we can set that up for you. You can, uh, you know, don't take my word for it. Do it yourself and, and see for yourself. Likewise, yeah, folks, if anyone's interested in that, just feel free to reach out to us at Sync. Um, you normally have somebody who kind of manages your relationship, um, so feel free to reach out. Um, good stuff. There is another question coming up in the chat here, which I'm going to uh, ask you. Jenny is doing a fantastic job of answering some of the questions coming in the thank chat. Thank you, Jenny. Yes, thank you, Jenny. Um, however, a question I want to ask to you, Philip, comes from Horace Wright, um, and it's a very open, honest question. I'm missing something here. As a company with a sizable deployment of company issued devices, what would be the employee's incentive to take on the data and voice cost of company business on their personal devices? What models have you seen corporations use to incent employees, incentivize employees to change this model? And what has been the initial and ongoing costs of this switch? So quite a bit to unpack there. Yeah, so uh, it's it, it's interesting. So, um, and, and as someone that's carried um, as many as three different phones at one time. Um, I'll tell you this much. So my personal advice, it's always with me. It's always charged. And I always know where it is. My company owned device, it might be in my backpack or my roller bag. When was the last time I charged it? I don't know. When was the last time I checked messages on it? I don't know. Um, and, and that's kind of the, the driving force behind it. The, the thing that we see is that, you know, your employees always know where their phone is and they usually take much better care of their own personal device. Um, the fact that we can prove to them and show them that they can access their, their work applications and work on that just like they would a company owned device um, makes it much more appealing because they're, let's face it, they're very familiar with their own phone. They know how everything works on their own phone and being able to, to tap an icon to launch an app that gets them into their, uh, their work environment and they can do it the same way as if they were on a company owned device um, makes it that much more appealing. Um, and plus, and then you, you don't have to worry about all the issues of cost of you know, getting the phone to them, making sure it's insured, filing claims when they lose or break them, um, you know, having someone manage it. Um, <laughs> like what Jenny says, studies prove this. Um, and that, and that is that is a big thing. We have we have one customer right now that that just said it's uh, it's it's amazing the number the the amount of time they see employees using the work apps on Hypori versus you know they, they used to be they would go to the company owned phone only when they had to, so the phone's usage was like only when I had to, and so now they're like well I got my phone right here in front of me my own phone I'll just pop into my Hypori environment. Do my work, hop out. I can hop back into my high poor environment. Do work, hop out. Um, so, so that ease of use and that ability to have it all right there on one device just makes it much easier. Thank you very much. Um, are notifications passed to the device's native notification system? So it's it's passed, and you see it as a high poor notification, but it does send out notifications. I I get them all the time where. I'll be, I'll be sitting there, I'll get up a phone call and I'll get two or three buzzes that says, you know, you have a new email, you have a new chat message in Teams or, um, 
there's, you know, your next meeting's coming up, my meeting reminders come up. Um, so yeah, you have notifications just like you would on a native device. They just come from the Hypori device. What kind of privileged access does the VMI solution need when running on mobile operating systems? Does what kind of privileged right. access does the VMI solution need when running on mobile OS? Um, so, so we're essentially an app. So if you're if you're on if you're on Android, we're an app. If you're on iOS, we're an app. Um, if you're on Windows 10, it's an app that you download. Um, I don't think it, it requires any special permissions or, you know, you can, you, it, unless you block the app from being downloaded on the employee's device, which means now you're managing their device. Um, so nothing, um, unless I misunderstood the, or misrepresented the question, um, I, I, I don't see, <laughs> it's an app on a phone. <laughs> cool, no worries. Any other app out there. Um, pricing model, is it subscription or license-based? Is it per, per, per uh, device? How does it yeah, work? So it's, it's license-based per user, correct. License-based per user, fantastic. Mm -hmm. What services are covered within the app? Uh, do things like MS Teams, Microsoft Teams, browsers, VoIP phones work? Uh, we spoke about that a little bit. Yeah. Is the traffic proxy back through your corporate network if you're browsing? Uh, no, it just goes through whichever... Um, it, it, that I guess that's a depends question. Um, so if you if you're using um, our cloud or Azure or AWS, it's all going to traverse through them. Um, you're going to be able to see kind of what's going on from the admin console. Um, but unless you have the device on premise attached to you, unless you're if you're using a non premise solution and an appliance from us, that would be the only time it would traverse your own networks. It's not required to round back through your networks every time it does anything. Cool. Um, can the Hypori servers send the access logs slash usage logs to the SIM? Uh, we do capture access log information, but it's in the admin panel. I don't think we send that to the SIM. That is a good question though. If you could send that to me separately, that would be great. Mm -hmm. No worries. I saw Jenny was uh, asking for us to, to tackle that, so we can. Do you have any CJIS agreements in place? God, I know what that is. Well, I can't remember what it stands for. Oh. Felicia, if you can, if you can give us the the uh, the, the full. Yeah, full I, I, that, I do so many acronyms every day. I'm just like, oh, criminal justice. That's it. Yeah, because we're, we're yeah. talking to the FBI right now. <laughs> That's where it comes from. Um, so. Uh, Talk to me separately. <laughs> There's some things I, I got to be very careful. I, I don't go outside of NDA. Um, that's why some of the questions I'm like, I know the answer, but I can't really say right now. <laughs> but I can talk to you privately one-on-one -on -one and give you more information if you'd like it. Fantastic, thank you very much. Uh, are laptops considered mobile devices in the context of all of this? Yes, they are. We, we treat them um, with the same zero trust approach. Um, so if it's a tablet or a laptop or even a Windows 10 desktop, uh, we kind of look at it, we treat them all the same and they all get presented the, the same type of environment. Got you. How would you address the bottleneck within VMI caused by the users retrieving the latest data directly from corporate servers? I don't think I understand that question. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> How would you address the bottleneck within VMI caused by the users retrieving latest data directly from corporate servers? So I think you're assuming that there is a bottleneck. Um, I, I don't, you know, with if you under, I, and this is where we have to get into showing you how the data traverses back and forth. Um, but we, it's so lightweight, and we're we're doing. There's so little data traversing back and forth. We never really create a bottleneck to begin with. Um, and, and you have to remember also that when you're in the Hypori environment, we're working at data center speeds. So if you're standing inside your data center with your laptop directly connected to the network and you run five applications all at the same time, it runs pretty fast, doesn't it? It's kind of the same thing with us. That's exactly what's happening behind the scenes. All the applications are running at data center speed at the, on, on, at the speed of their network. Um, versus at the speed of the mobile device. And that's one of the things that it, it's kind of interesting to show people once they understand how that works, it becomes much more apparent, you know, why, why the user experience is so highly regarded um, by our customers. 
because they don't have to worry about the device speed. They worry about the data center speed. It is kind of funny too to show someone when we're when you sign into the Hypori device and it's on Azure and you and you open up the app to do speed test and it shows 3.5 gigs per second. Uh, pretty amazing, both up and down road. So thank you very much. Uh, hopefully that answers your question there, Tan. Weir, so thank you very much. Um, how do the alerts work? Do they pass through the Hypori app or look native? Um, they pass through the app and show up on your screen just like any other um, notification does. Got you. Any issues with scaling this to more than 100,000 devices? And what about um, the operational costs and ease of use for move ad change? Yeah, so um, every so we can go to you know literally unlimited devices um, above 100,000, 150,000, 250,000 is not an issue. Um, it all depends on um, where the where the which platform you're using. If we're going to be doing it on premise, we're going to you know there's <laughs> there's going to be a lot of infrastructure that comes in. Um, that's why most people will go on cloud just simply because. Once, once we get it um, implemented and set up on cloud, um, it can expand. It's very elastic there. Um, we actually are working with a customer right now that's going to, it's a, not, not the 100,000 scale, but they're starting with 2,500 users and plan to scale up to over 7,000 within the next couple of months. Great. Uh, what about phone calls and, and calendars? Does it support synchronization of contacts and calendar information with the end device? Uh, so it does if the calendars are in the Hypori environment. Um, and, and if you have a VoIP phone set up, uh, we can integrate with that uh, very well. Um, and I know that like we use, we, we, you know, we've used Jabber and um, what was the other one? There's, there's one that we're working on uh, with a Microsoft customer. I can't remember the name of it, I'm sorry. But yeah, I know for sure though, if you have a VoIP system set up that we can integrate that into the, uh, into the virtual uh, desktop or mobile device. Brilliant. Um, good question here coming in from Sam. Do you have customers using this on untrusted public devices? For example, hotel business center computers, internet cafe computers, et cetera? Absolutely. And that's one of the, that's one of the beauties about it because we take the zero trust approach. <clears throat> Doesn't matter what the device is or where you're at. Um, when, when people look at the network traffic coming, when you have Hypori running, it looks just like normal network traffic. It doesn't look like anything special. It doesn't look like anything's in there. Um, and and the, the fact that we're just sending encrypted pixels to the device, and the only thing that's coming back is touch inputs, um, that kind of prevents the, the ability for someone to do a man in the middle attack. Got you. And final question. Uh, this is beautifully synchronized as we're literally coming up to time. We just literally hit 45 minutes past the hour now. But final question before we close things off. This sounds like a solution primarily for data consumers. Um, are content creators, for example, Excel gurus, PDF creators, using Hypori also? I wouldn't say we have a, a lot of content creators using it yet. Um, I do know that. Um, it, you know, when you think about what we were trying to accomplish and who our target market was, um, I don't think, you know, we had, I don't think we had content creators in mind. Um, that doesn't mean it wouldn't work for them. Um, although, you know, having uh, uh, a son who's married to a graphic artist, I kind of know they, <laughs> they have unique requirements. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of an unusual one. Uh, the one thing I do want to say, though, in, in closing is we would welcome the opportunity to show you um, a live demo one on one. Um, if you'd like to reach out uh, via our contact information, uh, we'd love to set that up. And if you after you see the demo, if you think it's something uh, worthwhile taking a look at, we could see about getting you set up with a like a 14 day demo account so you could try it on your own device and see how it works. Well, thank you very much, sir. Well, that brings us to the close of the first session. So uh, again, I'm going to ask the audience and trust that they will join me in a virtual round of applause for Philip. So thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Folks, I've just...